how's it going? We are the History Boys once again. I am Tyler, a History Boy. Um, What's your I'm, last name? Ty, I'm Tyler Armentrout. You know, he's I, he's trying to the more than one Tyler. In the moment I did my intro, I thought to myself, "Have I ever used my last name before, and will it be used against me in a court of law?" But uh, <laughs> he, he, I'm Tyler Armentrout. I'm a history boy. You guys know me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Christopher Whedon, and. Uh, I let Tyler do the intro this time, and he fucking fucked it up. <laughs> First and last time. <laughs> so it's mm. not it's not happening again. He's yeah. it's that was his one fucking chance, yeah. and he fucking blew it. Now I owe him a bunch of money. Yeah, like a lot of money, like almost like twenty five bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Shit ton of money. Yeah. And uh, speaking of money, I am uh, Zach, that uh, pretty bearded lady hanging out at the corner, Mech. Um, <laughs> Trying to trying to make that dollar, trying to make that hustle. That Skrilla? Uh, that Skrilla. Trying to make that rent money. Would you say that it makes you holler? Yes, I I do holler for that dollar. Dude, I've been hollering all week. I've been hollering and I don't get a cent. People walk past my my apartment and I'm like, hey motherfucker! Yeah. I mean, uh, does that count? Yeah, yeah. I don't I'm hollering a, at them. I don't get a cent from it. People just tell me to be quiet. You're like, dude, it's three in the morning. <laughs> they just hollering. ignore me. Someday I'm going to show him what it means when you ignore me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, just walking white rage over yeah. here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I am Jerry Nash, your history boy. Welcome, and thank you for listening again. Today we are talking about an extremely epic story that if, if all you know is what you're taught in school, then you don't know the whole thing. It's about the M&M store. <laughs> I thought it was about Fast oh, the and one Furious. At, the one at Times Square? Yeah. Cool. No, of course we are talking about the first circumnavigation of the globe. So, just like the Fast and the Furious. I've... When you're here, you're family. Do they go around the world and back in time and stuff? Back... I mean, they went to Tokyo. They went backwards yeah. through time. Yeah. They went backwards through Tokyo. In a race car. <laughs> From what I've heard. So in 1519, five ships and 270 men left Spain to find what Columbus didn't. A route to the Spice Islands Mm. by sailing west and not east. Ah, Arrakis. Ah, there you go, there you go. Delicate politics uh, in a carved up world. It's, it's, the story's full of, uh, it's a harrowing survival story with horrid atrocities, uh, terrible misunderstandings, and mutinies. Oh, cool. So a lot of uh, guys uh, accidentally planning two dates on the same day so they gotta have, like, two costumes because it's at the same place. Yeah, it's like a Mrs. Doubtfire yeah. uh, yep. style situation. They just, wanna, they just wanna spend time with their kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, the, and the only countries in the world at this point, essentially, were Portugal and Spain. Like, the only country's <laughs> worth giving a shit about. Uh, I, thought you were gonna, true, I thought you were going to say Europe and Africa. Yeah, Europe, the country. Well, no, the, yeah. the two, Europe, like, the country, Age of Exploration Africa, countries, countries were Portugal and Spain. You are correct. Age of Discovery is what they, I don't know, academics call it. I don't, yeah. I don't know. We're not academics. This is no, a big no, disclaimer. No, we are not. Maybe uh, you guys aren't. <laughs> Chris has been one this whole time. Yeah. I got tenure. Yeah. <laughs> Spain and Portugal, because they were the biggest uh, powers in the Age of Discovery, at some point there was some disagreement, you know? When, when you start to claim lands and stuff like that, the, you, and you have two opposing countries, they tend to get cagey with each other. This land is my land, this land is your land, right? Sort of a thing, yeah. you know? And so at a point they had to draw a line of demarcation over the globe and basically just saying anything east of this is Portugal's anything west of this is Spain yeah, but they were like what if we go around see so so I mean uh, the line is inherently flawed for a couple of reasons first off no one knew if the line went all the way around the globe simply because they didn't know what was on the other side <laughs> of the globe 
This is like a like that episode of The Odd Couple that none of us have ever seen because we're way too young, but I've heard about <laughs> from other TV shows that have referenced it where they draw a line down the middle of their apartment. Oh, yes, yes. And, oh. And, and then they all need to get stuff on the other side of the apartment. Right. So they're like walking over the furniture. They're like trying to figure out ways around, you know. Yeah. It I've doesn't seen, work out. I've seen some of The Odd Couple. It was on Nick at Night. Mm. You gotta, you gotta somehow... Nick yeah. at Night has friends now, okay? Friends is on Nick at Night. We're what? Old. Is that true? Yeah, I think so. No. I remember when they had Roseanne, and that was a while ago. I yeah. Fresh remember, Prince. Fresh Prince, I remember. Yeah. Uh, I remember I Love Lucy and the Munsters. Like, yeah. Like, Nick no. at Night, like, all and the then, black and white shit Then was... Roseanne and fucking Fresh Prince shows up, and all your teeth fall out, and you realize that you're one foot, you got one foot in the grave. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're dying of scurvy. Yeah, you're dying, yeah, you're dying of yeah. scurvy. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Out on the sea, it's yeah. nothing but a, a TV playing Nick at Night to entertain yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, you're like much really, like these guys. Really wish oh, they wish they had Nick at Night. <laughs> they didn't even have Nick at Night. Ah, <laughs> yeah. oh, that's hell on earth. Pope Alexander the Sixth. He he was the one that drew drew the line, and Portugal immediately cried foul about this because they were like, "Oh, well, they were like, now wait a minute, you know, yeah. like they get the whole New World over here, and we get this side that is mostly claimed." Uh, no, I'm claimed by them, yeah. but, but they, because the line keeps moving, because there was another thing where, like, they couldn't actually really determine longitude by this time. They could determine latitude, but not really longitude. That was tough for them to which do. Which way is which? Latitude, so longitude, latitude, longitude, longitude. Yeah. That doesn't answer anything. Lo- longitude is up and down, right? North and south. North and south, like the lines that go... Longitude. Go up, Right. And then the lines that go uh, horizontal Fatitude. around the Earth. But the Earth is a sphere. It's not fatter that way. Yeah, but okay, so but on the poles, you... the poles are on the top, though, right? Longitude. That's longitude from pole to pole. Width equals fat. Latitude, fatitude. That is not helping. Longitude. The equator is, is, a, is a latitude line. But on a map, like... The equator is a latitude line. I feel, yeah, oh, I know that. I feel like you are being purposely nuts in this moment. I am. I'm trying to make sure the people at home know the difference between longitude, latitude. Oh, yeah. Everybody at home gets it. You don't get it. Oh, I got it. I knew it. I knew it going in. Hey, easy there, Dad. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. On the next episode, we're we're going to explain what north, east, south, and west are for our audience. <laughs> oh, never eat sour wheat. What is an ocean? So what they had to do uh, to sort of settle it was they came up with the Treaty of Tordesillas. And what that was is they were like, okay, there were sort of, they'd still divided it east, Portugal, west, Spain. It created a lot of problems because, again, what happens if you go all the way around? Yeah. You know, it doesn't make a lot of sense. It falls apart pretty quickly. But they had, no one had done it yet. No one had gone all the way around. So yet. they're going to prove it wrong. Yeah. And, I mean, Ptolemy in, uh, you know, Egyptian times had actually figured out that the wor- world was round. Right. And But he was a dum-dum and thought w- that everything revolved around it because he's an idiot. So. <laughs> well, well, the thing Joke's was is you. he actually got pretty close to figuring out the actual circumference of the Earth. But he was, he was off. He was off by a lot. A small amount for his time, a yeah. lot to if you're going to sail around the I Earth. I mean, if I were to do it, if I were to try to figure out the circumference, of the globe with the information he had, mm-hmm. he probably got closer than I would. Mm. I would say it's like a, it's almost like a, a, a Fermi style, like like factor of failure, right? Where he was like, based off the information I had, I made a guess, and it was very it was a, close. It was an incredibly good guess. It was a, and and even considering like, like this is ancient Egypt, yeah. that he figures this out, you yeah. know, it was, it was quite the discovery. For the yeah. time he was just off. So what? Like they didn't know that that the Pacific Ocean even existed back then, and and even in in like Magellan's time they called it the South Sea. They didn't really know how big the Pacific Ocean was. They didn't know how giant it is. So my my real question though is uh, when does Christopher Cross come into play, and what were the yacht rock tunes they were listening to? Because <laughs> I really hope that it was. Sailing, <laughs> yeah. talking about yeah, talking about sa- My favorite thing about Christopher Cross is when uh, Newman got him for the uh, Newmanium. The oh Newman. yes, yeah, yeah. It's like the Newmanium. Yeah. The Newmanium. Yeah. Mm. 
so a couple of differences that I, I want you guys to understand is so Spain is the one that they conquer, right? When they go to the New World and new places and they claim them for Spain, yeah. they replace full systems of, of government, full systems of administration. Yeah. They replace it with their own. And me saying that is a little uh, reductive, right? Because, yeah, them replacing it is them obliterating anything that once stood there. And then they made uh, my people. Brutally. Yeah. Yeah, brutally and horrifically. They, they, they show up in their little metal hats and they hop off their, their fucking boats on horses. Yeah. And then they pretty much just vacuum, reverse death vacuum everybody while mm-hmm. throwing Bibles out the yep. sides of yep. their horses. And then they call it a day. But, yeah. but I, I do hear they, they got diarrhea because of it. Yes. Montezuma's Revenge, right? Yes. Story for a different yeah. day. Yeah, small that, this... price to pay for all the smallpox that they put across yeah. the world. That is where I was but, going with it. Right. Story, if... story for a different day. But this is the time of the conquistadors. You know, Cortez, Pizarro, Vespucci. Uh, Pizarro? Glory and God. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. By the way, I'm pretty sure we called him Bizarro in our... Uh... In the in the Aguirre. Yeah. Lope de Aguirre. Yeah, he was We're helping. Like, oh, Bizarro? Yeah. Bizarro, I'm helping. <laughs> Bizarro, I get a whole bag you. of peanuts. <laughs> I love you. Yeah. Uh, Portugal, on the other hand, was a smaller country. It was relatively wealthy at certain times. What they did instead was they they focused on replacing existing trade networks. They they would occupy certain strategic locations that you sort of have to stop at on on your way. If you have like a bunch of spices on your ship. You gotta stop at these places, and you gotta pay duties on all this stuff, and that's how they got rich. Okay, so they don't really have the military strength to to do what Spain did. Spain is Netflix, and Portugal is like Hulu. Hulu, yeah, because <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a bunch of TV from a bunch a of bunch newer networks. shows. Yeah, they're though, bringing so. it all in. Yeah, yeah. I would say it's more like uh, I don't know a Peacock. Peacock. And oh, uh, by the way, sure. folks, this episode is brought to you by Peacock. The uh, streaming it's NBC, service. It has Office on it. Yeah, it's, so it's got Office in there. So, <laughs> so Portugal gets the East, which means they get anime. The fun of <laughs> Portugal's the Funimation, <laughs> which is uh, kind of funny because Funimation does not work in Europe or anywhere outside of the U.S. Ah, I know that because I'm a nerd. Well, I'm pretty most, sure I did try to watch Dragon Ball Z. A lot in like Europe. a lot like the Portuguese military <laughs> it didn't work in Europe. <laughs> You're like, I'm a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Travels and doesn't have a VPN. When the Portuguese went east, uh, they went around the Cape of Good Good Hope on on the southern yeah. tip of Africa, and they were basically trying to control all trade of the Indian Ocean. So what that meant was all the spices coming coming from there into Portugal. Yeah. And at least the duties and money and anything that comes from the spice trade, they controlled that. But one thing that they had to do was they had to kick out the Arab spice traders. Because before this, the Arab spice traders controlled, monop- had a monopoly on the entire spice trade. And what they would do, this is hilarious, what they would do is they would be like, hey, where'd you get all this stuff? And like, oh, Africa, India... Fill off a truck. Yeah, fill off a truck. Thank you. Yeah, and the thing is, is like, it may have been traded in India. It's not grown in India. Some of these really valuable spices are not grown there. Some of it is, but not all of it. And then Africa, like, forget about it. That they're straight up just leading them down a rabbit hole because they don't want them to know. They don't want them to (laughs) to interfere with their business. Uh, Like, where'd you get these spices? Like, I don't know who's asking. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm surprised that. Spices were so important in a world that Food Network did not exist in. <laughs> well, the thing was, is all their food was blamed, and Europe was very starved for gold. So, so spice was the, it was the currency. It so, was worth way more than gold. Way so what you're more saying than is, gold. despite how much spice was uh, flowing at that point in time and throughout history, England never really caught on. Uh, they did later, okay. very late in the game, but. It wasn't spice at that but only point. It was other it. shit. I've been to England. I guess they forgot about it. Yeah. <laughs> they uh, want you to forget about it. If memory serves correctly, the only spice that England has is that brown sauce, 
Which don't get me wrong, brown sauce is yeah. good. It's the, like brown sauce. Was it, is it just called brown sauce? It's brown yeah. sauce. Yeah, it it, it's like I'm the, a fan of brown sauces. Hey, the the brown sauce. I bet you are. Is good. <laughs> Got him. So so what we're basically talking about is a post Vasco da Gama world. Is is what Portugal's sort of living in? Because Vasco da Gama found like the way, right? And it was like to India by sailing east. And like, like Columbus, he was like, you know what? If the Portuguese have like a monopoly on sailing east to get to the Indies, I gotta say, sail west mm-hmm. to get to the Indies. Because we all know by this point that the Earth is in fact a globe. We've already known that for a no, long time. You're saying that, Christopher Columbus didn't discover that? No, 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 no. no. That's that's a that's a that is somehow an unkillable myth. I 100 percent learned that in elementary school. Yeah. But yeah. I too, as I dumb as I am, I do know that that like, I have known for a long time yeah. that that is not the case. It's an unkillable myth. So what you're saying is that Magellan, uh, at this point in time, this is after the Catholic Church killed many uh, scientists and astronomers that oh, have yes. proved it's time and time again that the Earth was round and that it wasn't the center of the solar now, system. Uh, now the Earth was round, but. Like, think of a balloon. Like, holding a balloon in your hand. Okay. Okay. So the world is on top, right? Where you live is on top. They still believe that it was possible for you to fall off the edge. Because if you drip water on a balloon, it falls off, right? So, so that sounds like flat earth conspiracy But they didn't stuff. even have balloons back then, well, so well, what were they it's even... it's still recognizing that the earth is round Maybe but they didn't to... know what was on the other well, side they fall, didn't know that there's a whole ocean on the other side so they thought you could still fall off but jerry have you ever blown up a balloon is it ever really a full circle okay it's a bad uh, it, what what is a perfectly round ball that i can use Zach? a watermelon <laughs> a, water a globe a watermelon a globe <laughs> And before before what we're talking about, uh, nobody had globes in their homes or anything like this until this trip happened, and then people had globes in their homes. Keep in mind, like what what we're taught in school is that Christopher Columbus, Ferdinand Magellan, Vasco da Gama, all these people, they sailed for some high-minded scientific reasons to discover new lands and all of these things. No, it was economic in nature. The whole point of of basically the age of discovery, and you know when it begins and when it ends is sort of gray. But the whole point was the spices, Ooh, oh. the spice. It's basically, right? a get rich it, quick scheme. Yeah. Oh, it was because I'm telling you guys, if you had a small bag of spice mm-hmm. at the end of your voyage, you could live the rest of your life no problem. On the money you made from that. So what you do is so, you sell spice, and then you pay people to sell spice under you. More people they get to sell spice under them. What you're saying is that you're making spice on spice. Yeah. Well, well, the thing you're is, making is, spice on top of spice. Well, the thing is, is uh, you you you're, you're not gonna have a problem selling the spice. You're not gonna have a problem doing that. You you need somebody to go get it for you. Mm-hmm. And that's a tall so order. So you hire people to go get it for you. And yeah. they hire people to go get it for them. Yes, exactly. And the more people you hire yes. under you... You get richer, and they still get a cut. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's about the, prof. It, well, it, it's, like, the, it's like a spice funnel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, and at the tippy top, you got the uh, the, the royal families of both yep. Spain and Portugal. Yep. And uh, and then you got these guys coming up, and they, you know, they take a knee, and they go, Hey, I got these boats. You mm-hmm. know, give me some money. We can finance the trips, right? Give me some boats. We're, we're going to get there. But the spices that they wanted. Were they good? Cinnamon. Ooh. Mace. 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 Nutmeg. Uh, pepper. You're not both black stop and it. white. All you're right. not going to stop a, a, a bear with fucking nutmeg. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, you're going to encourage them. They're going to be like, oh, this guy's got both nutmeg. Uh. But the most valuable of all were cloves. Cloves, a small bag of cloves, you could retire on. Really? 
Small bag. What about Just menthol? Keep small bag of cloves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so with that small bag of cloves, do you have to have like a cure demo or like Bauhaus yeah. or some yeah. shit? Oh yeah. no, you know, dye your hair. The, the biggest issue eyeliner. with when you have a small bag of cloves is fucking beating all the goths that want to smoke them off your fucking <laughs> yeah. back. It's like, no, yeah. this is my retirement. This yeah. is my four hundred one k. Right. And they're like, I need to look good at the club. Oh, you're into industrial. Name three OSHA regulations. <laughs> <laughs> The more I thought oh, about that joke, the funnier it got. It's good. That it's is good. the most surprising joke of the year. <laughs> <laughs> now, these spices could not be grown in Europe. Yeah, it's fucking cold. It's cold. They were in a mi- mini ice age. Mini. The little ice age is what they call it. Yeah, it was too dry. It was too cold. Much colder than it is now. Everybody's nipples were rock hard. <laughs> ice age shaking. Perfecto. Yes. Good job, Chris. So, the only known place that you could get the spice was from the Spice Islands. Ah. Ooh. Uh, The supposed... The Arrakis Islands. (laughs) Yeah. There were supposed islands. Uh, The Moluccas is what what the Philippine name for them are. The only place you could find them. And, of course, you know, you had to sort of sift through rumors and lies about how to get there. It's hard to get there, and no one wanted you to get there because you're cutting in on their business, right? Uh, Me- meanwhile, they're like, where do we find all this cardamom? Yeah. And they're like, I don't know. I'm just sitting on a pile of opium, just figuring it <laughs> out, man. I'm just chilling out, listening to the Doobie Brothers. Yeah. yeah. Listen to the Doobie Brothers or listening to Fleetwood, Fleetwood Mac's rumors. Yeah. Now, well... Because it's all about rumors. Now, some of the rumors <laughs> that the Arab spice traders spread are pretty great. Because, you know, where they're from, that's another one. But they would also spread rumors about, like, oh, don't go there. Don't go there. Hmm. You know why? Because you get to a certain point in the ocean, and this is before Vasco da Gama, Hmm. but you get to a certain point in the ocean where the water boils. Mm Mm-hmm. Or there's fogs that'll envelop your ships and you get lost. Muse behind. Oh, shit. there's, There's storms. There's storms. There's There's fucking storms. There's cannibal natives. Bears. There's cannibal natives. There's dog-headed people out there with dog heads. There's there's people walking around that are a tripod of a person. Or or not even tripod, sorry. They they walk around on one big foot, Mm -hmm. and they got, like, one eye. Yeah. They walk around on one big foot, and they got two dicks. And they're walking on their foot. <laughs> you ever see those people who don't have a head, but their face is on their torso? Yes. You know what I'm talking about? That, that's another. That is. Like, so, I actually am not even joking. And, that and, is some of it, and some of it is, like, uh, way back. It's from, like, Pliny the Elder, who was yeah. a Roman uh, historian. You know, talked about all these crazy he, monsters. Like, I, these these little people with giant ears that could lay on one ear and I, then I cover just, themselves up like with another ear. like just on the verge of passing out blackout drunk he's like yeah man one time I saw like a fucking lion with a human <laughs> face and a fucking scorpion so oh, just yeah. fucking and then I saw some fucking tiny people with fucking giant ears yeah and, yeah. and big and it, claws and it was really honestly a lot of people there was another uh, there, there were multiple books out there that people published claiming one guy claimed that he had been around this is a story for a different day i want to do this at some point but he had claimed to been around the world he had all these monsters and stuff and people took it as fact whereas they were like that marco polo is full of shit whereas like (laughs) marco polo's stuff was way more factual turns out you know in his defense when i say marco he did say polo Ah, so he knew what he was doing he knew what he was doing it's true we always knew where he was. <laughs> Makes me happy. Then there was the prospect of dying from the excruciating and mysterious diseases mm. that awaited you while on sea. Ocean uh, disease. The, the biggest one that people feared the most was scurvy. Mm. Because mm-hmm. at this time, they... They probably didn't they, know. All they thought, they had no idea about vitamin C or anything like that, but what they, what they, because it's a vitamin C deficiency. We've yeah. talked about they scurvy before. Sunny eight. But yeah. what, what, what they thought is that humans shouldn't be away from land for 
extended periods of time, and that is why people are dying. So so they, simply, you're not on land. It's, so it, 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 it's a land sickness. Yes, is what they thought it was. Yes. Ocean, yeah. ocean madness. <laughs> ocean madness. Ocean yeah. madness. Your teeth no fall out. Your hair ocean falls out. As you start we bleeding. Go it's terrible. On. And then they were like, "Well, okay, so they need something. They need like uh, purple stuff." Uh, maybe uh, OJ, and then they figured out Sunny D. Dude, we're gonna we're gonna really get into it when. Oh, we're, we're gonna, gonna get really into Sunny D. Yes. Sure for delight. <laughs> the, <laughs> why was that so funny? I don't know. They sure react to Sunny to Sunny D because they were like, not everyone's being delighted by this group. <laughs> so there was this mysterious scurvy. And then there was, of course, starvation, Mm -hmm. dehydration, Mm -hmm. dysentery, malaria, all sorts of new world diseases. Wait, this was on the ocean? Uh, Well, and on islands and things like this. Why didn't they... Getting bit by mosquitoes and things like this. Remember the old quote, uh, water, water everywhere, so let's all have a drink? (laughs) Simpsons reference, I have said it before on the show, but I brought it up again, because it was a solid joke when they said it. (laughs) Much like your need for nutrition, we think we're also running out of Simpsons references, and then Chris... He just brings it back. I brought back one we've used. It finds a way. It always does. But the thing was, is... The Spanish and Portuguese and honestly most of Europe had a harder time getting spices now because, of course, in 1453, Constantinople fell to the Ottoman Turks. And like we mentioned in Malta, they controlled the Mediterranean at that point. Right. So the Mediterranean was out. They needed a new way to get spices, right? Because, mm-hmm. again, very lucrative. So they that's why they sailed around Cape of, of Good Hope. You know, that's why they sailed... That's why they risked their lives to go yeah. across the ocean to find this stuff. They're like, if I don't, if, if I don't do this, my restaurant is going to fail. I'm going to lose mm-hmm. my Michelin yeah. star... And no one's going to want to eat there anymore, so we got to uh, do this. I thought you were like, we got to call Gordon Ramsay, <laughs> and he's going to yell at us. Oh, he'd be like, the food used to be good, but f- finally some not good fucking food. <laughs> yeah. So that brings us to a focal point of our story. Mm. A man named Fernão de Megales, which is Portuguese. Yeah, I'm not uh, saying I, it like that. I practiced on that one. <laughs> you did really good. Better than I did. Good. I'm not going to have to cut out uh, you trying to yeah. say it a bunch of times. Portuguese, uh, Fernand Magellan. May I call him Magellan? Yeah, we're going to refer to him as the anglicized Ferdinand Magellan. But yeah, Fernal de Magalhães. Uh, a man who loves spices. He was born on the 4th of February, 1480. Is that uh, I don't fucking know. I don't it fucking care. Makes him old as shit. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have my witch wife with me to tell me what's going on. <laughs> but no, he was born into a family of sort of minor Portuguese nobles. Like, his his family could trace their lineage to a crusader, and that's how they got their family estate in Portugal. Like, my fucking great-great-grandpappy crusaded, and they're like... Yeah. Yeah, I'm in a state. I don't fucking give a shit. Yeah. And he was a page in the king's court, um, which was pretty great for him. He, he received a pretty great education there. He was Ooh. deeply Catholic. Like Kenneth from 30 Rock. Yeah, he was a page. <laughs> he was a page. That's right. And uh, deeply religious. There you go. Uh, Not Catholic, but some made-up thing. Yeah. His uh, Magellan's childhood hero was actually Christopher Columbus. Gross. Oh. Columbus is a story for a different day. We'll, we'll describe Columbus in detail on a, on a different episode. We're not doing Columbus. We're not doing it now. In March of 1505, at the age of 25, Magellan was enlisted uh, in a fleet of 22 ships led by Francisco de Almeida. And it was the, he was the first viceroy of, of the Portuguese India, and they were working to kick out the Arab spice traders so they could have... That monopoly for themselves. That's Good they luck, got guys. spice. I want that spice. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So they had to get rid of all the people that were, you know, the the networks that were already in place, right? Yeah. 
So during the Portuguese conquest of the Indian Ocean, Magellan became familiar with sailing and navigation and, and general military operations. And what he learned was sort of the Portuguese way of doing it, uh, which is very secretive, yeah. extremely oh. secretive. You have an astrolabe and like a map and like a compass and you're looking at the stars and you're trying to yeah. line and it And Steve Winwood is playing in the background. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you're on a yacht. You don't, yes. you don't tell your crew what you're doing. You don't tell your crew exactly what's happening. Yeah. Uh, it's just very secretive. You don't tell the rest of the world either. In fact, the king said, like, anyone that's telling anybody about prior voyages, about other things that we found and stuff like that will be put to death. Trade secrets. Yes. Trade Loose secrets. lips sink ships. Yes. Yes. Loose lips sail ships to places that we'd rather them not go to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty much. Now, he participated in, in a lot of battles. He was wounded a couple of times. Chicks dig scars. <laughs> yeah. Nah, true. In 1511, under Alfonso de Albuquerque. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, like <laughs> that's New just Mexico. How it's yeah. Magellan and Francisco Serraro uh, participated in the conquest of Malacca, which is different than the Malucca. Islands. I also want different from molasses. Yes. Yes. It, indeed. Where you can surf that molasses. You can't surf that Malacca. No, you can't. After the conquest, Sororo and, and Magellan, they sort of parted. Uh, they, were, they were like friends, maybe even related. But they parted ways, and uh, Magellan was sort of moving up through the ranks. He got promoted... Uh, he was prom promoted to a quartermaster, Ooh. and basically what that did was it gave him the authority to move around like the spoils of war in an equitable fashion. I played RPGs. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> you know, at the end of a battle or a war, you move around, you know, whatever. Yeah. You make sure everybody gets their fair share of the plunder that yeah. you steal da, da, from the city. Da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, I like that. Thank you, Zach. You're uh, welcome. But it was sort of his undoing. Because uh, he, there, there were some uh, allied native tribes that helped them in, in like a conquest in Morocco. He paid them off with some livestock, and the Portuguese court uh, thought that he was trading with the enemy, which was totally preposterous. And by the way, uh, the reason why the Portuguese court sort of turns on him is because uh, in English his name is John the Second. That was the king of Portugal, João mm -hmm. the, the second. He died, and the next uh, king of Portugal was Manuel the first. And he was anyone that was perceived a part of the prior administration was looked at as sort of someone who's not loyal to Manuel, right? Sounds like America. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> like, 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 it's, it's, well, it's new corporate leadership. Mm. <laughs> it's like when you hear about like. Uh, uh, like some movie or TV show idea that's like really popular, and then the corporate leadership changes at the network, <laughs> and they're like, and they're like, yeah, actually, uh, we're gonna cancel this because the new guys, they're not a fan. Yeah, but when when he was in Malacca, actually, he uh, captured a man. Hmm? His name was Enrique of Malacca. Cool. They said he was originally from the Moluccas as well. This isn't actually totally accurate, but. Uh, he spoke a language that, that they spoke in, in these islands. You know, he was sort of valuable, but he was definitely a slave. He was a slave that per, Magellan's personal slave, Enrique, was. Yeah, they were together, like, the whole time after So there's this. a sexual element to it. <laughs> yeah. Like, you can be my hero, you know? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, uh, I, I see what you were doing. Now, that's interesting, because I was going different with that. I was thinking of... Uh, Together forever and ever one. Yeah. A little Rick Astley for you. There you go. Yeah. Uh, that, that is the Rick Roll that we're going to start doing. Oh, Rick Roll reference. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, it's Triple R. Magellan is still doing it. Ma Magellan was wounded in, in Morocco and it gave him a lifelong limp. <laughs> and actually, some of the people in the Portuguese court called his limp fake. To like garner more respect in the court, you know, yeah, like I fought. In his shoe. <laughs> he's like, I fought for the, I fought for the crown. I should be because he, uh, Magellan would go back to Portugal without permission, yeah. and he'd be yeah. like, Hey, I need more money. I lost my horse in this battle, and look, I'm wounded. Look at my limp. I'm limping. <laughs> like, and and the king always was like, No, 
He's just trying to justify his parking pass. The, yeah, uh, yeah. Just trying to get validation. <laughs> get take, the, take off your boots, <laughs> shake out all those jawbreakers you got in there. <laughs> it's like fucking Larry David and uh, when he gets the the handicapped parking pass. Yeah. Well, after after Magellan was proven innocent from trading with the enemy, he went like. And the thing was, like, he was a stubborn man, Magellan was. He went <laughs> back to the king of Portugal and demanded even more money. Wow. Well, he uh, sounds like Larry after, David. <laughs> after he said no and, and all this stuff. And the king just kept saying, like, no. And on top of that, Magellan kept asking the king, because Magellan wanted to be a part of the Age of Discovery. He wanted yeah. to have his name up there with Columbus mm-hmm. and, and Vasco da Gama and, and you know, Pizarro and, Jerry and, and Amerigo Vespucci. So he, he had this idea that he was going to sail around the world. By sailing west, he could get to the Spice Islands and fill the Portuguese coffers, right? Mm-hmm. Whereas the Portuguese king was looking at it, and he's like, Look, something you don't know, Magellan, but something I know. We've been to the Spice Islands. Shh, shh, shh. Shut the fuck uh, up, man. You're going to ruin our Ponzi we're not trying to. <laughs> yeah, we're not trying to fucking shake the boat here. Yeah. No pun intended. So he kept saying no. Like, Magellan asked, like, three times. And and Magellan's like, when Ferdinand, Ferdinand Magellan sells around the world, he sells around the world, <laughs> right? He said, you can make that your mama joke about me. I'm okay with it because I just really want to do that in real life. And then you can make the joke yeah. after and we'll be, it'll be okay. I'll act, I'll act offended. He <laughs> But as long as it, I get to go it's, around It's the homie the hookup yeah. insult. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Soraro, he he actually went, he went to the Spice Islands. He stayed there, the Moluccas. Uh, he married a woman there. He became a military advisor. Like he did all this stuff. Uh, but he he sent letters back to Magellan. It proved like maybe, it, it sort of inspired Magellan to keep, like I want to go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get rich. It's gonna be dope. So a picture. He of loves a by scheme. The pool. Yeah, he loves a good scheme. So what ended up happening? to Magellan is that he didn't get any more assignments from Portugal. Mm-hmm. He he kept saying like, "Hey, I want to I want to do this. I want to go somewhere. I want to do something." And yeah. they were like, "How about you be a common sailor on this one voyage?" And he's like, "That's an insult," which it was. Uh he was he had already proved himself. He was a quartermaster to knock him back down to common sailor giant insult from yeah. from the Portuguese crown. Right. So basically he he's like Uber Eats when you get that thing like oh deliver McDonald's to fucking West Seattle for 45 minutes. Yeah. yeah. You get 6 bucks. Yeah. You're like fucking reject that shit. Yeah, yeah, it's an that's insult. Not fair. Yeah, that's I was like I wanted to deliver spice. So in 1517 uh after sort of a tussle with King Manuel the 1st which basically he kept again denying his demands to sail west for the Spice Islands. And even, like, you know, it's customary, you know, at the end of your meeting, you kneel down in front of the king, yeah. and, and you, you, his kiss his, <laughs> you kiss his ring. The king held back his hand. He held Ooh. back his hand, and it was a slight. And he goes, well, what do I do now? And the king goes, whatever you want. So he jerked him off. <laughs> did, did, no. just, just gave him a quick, fast, and loose one. Took his shit no, in the okay. court. <laughs> and says, Are you not entertained? <laughs> <laughs> no. I like uh, to okay. think he did. Well, the he, upper he, deck to all his toilets. Yeah. <laughs> Which is hard, because you have to wait for a new shit <laughs> each time. Yeah. He pulled the warriors and just get, did, Can you dig it, yeah. suckers? Yeah. 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 Opened Good. up his, uh, his frock of the time. <laughs> Magellan seeing really no way out. Uh, stagnant. He's doesn't have a lot of money. He actually uh, invested some money in a voyage. And investing money in voyages is always a gamble. Because mm-hmm. you don't know if they're all just going to die or not. It's like making a movie. Yeah. Well, except, you, you know, they're not just going to die. These people could just be lost forever. You never hear from them. I think uh, if a movie again. bombs, they should die because of <laughs> capitalism. <laughs> yeah. That's the only way they'll learn. Yeah. It's do, true. Do we know what the name of the voyage was? Because I think no. it might have been Dogecoin. <laughs> <laughs> there were a lot of voyages that we don't, history doesn't necessarily remember. 
as much as Columbus or any up. of these people. Yeah, oh, yeah uh, they died uh, or uh, disappeared. Never heard from again. Uh, Ethereum and AMC, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, those, those movie pass. <laughs> yeah, is what you're thinking. Uh, yeah, uh, Magellan invested a lot into movie pass, and uh, then all of his fortune was gone. Uh, or a ripple. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Still hear about Ripple. Like, my yeah. Blade. Oh, these people can watch a shitload of movies basically free. I, yeah. I'm going to make money off that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. But the thing is, is... he Magellan was a single-minded person. And that's something you kind of got to realize about him. Is he was kind of a know-it-all. He was yeah. kind of insufferable to Ugh. be around. Mm. But the thing was, is the he Jerry was Jerry style character. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I knew that was coming. I'm too. sorry. <laughs> that was a low hanging fruit of like, a joke. Yeah, yeah. And I went for it, and I have no regrets. You know, I, that's okay. I, uh, I I didn't think he was fishing for it because usually when he's like insufferable, know-it-all. Uh, huge dick, super handsome. <laughs> then we're like a Jerry type character. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I cut him off before he got to the dick part. Yeah. yeah. Well, well this time. handsome made up for it, so yeah. it kind of balances out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Brave. <laughs> You're still talking about Magellan. <laughs> There's no goddamn way I'd want to sail across the ocean like yeah, this. Fair enough. Anyway, even now, uh, yeah. no, God, even now, modern equipment, even if modern someone ships. Else is driving. Yeah, I'm not the captain. <laughs> yeah. I don't even have to do any work. Yeah. I gotta sit there. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 Uh. No. 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 So seeing really no way out, Magellan fled Portugal, and he went to Spain. Uh, which is a big move because the Portuguese and the Spanish at this point are like mortal enemies. Mm-hmm. They hate each other. Dogs hate and cats. each other. Hate each other. I, I can't like say that enough. They hate each other. Again, like, they had to draw a line in the middle of the earth <laughs> to keep them away from each other. Like the odd couple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know Wait, that we it, said that. Is that where the prime meridian is at? Really? Uh, I don't believe so. No. So he changed his name. He changed his name to the Spanish, Fernando de Magallanes. Okay. What did he change it to? Uh, Magellan. Uh, well, that we, was we changed that. after that. after his life well, that's actually, by the English. That's really much cool. later. Much later. The English, as generous as always, changed it for him. Yeah. yeah. To Ferdinand. To a something German that name. Americans Ferdinand can pronounce. Magellan. Yeah. I mean, I could pronounce that. I just, I just, you know, I you got to practice. Some people yeah. are just naturals at it. Uh, I'm not. I gotta practice at all that. It's because you're American. Yeah, it's fucking hard as <laughs> shit. It's tough to pronounce anything that isn't like cheeseburger, yeah. cheeseburgers, and yeah. paradise. <laughs> well, Pizza. and on that note, though, Magellan didn't really speak Spanish or Castilian or anything like that. Uh, so he had a he had a hard time because they were like, again, they're mortal enemies. So here comes this Portuguese guy, doesn't really speak Spanish or Castilian. He uh, is walking around like he's somebody, you yeah. know what I mean? And they're like, man, this guy's a fucking Portuguese motherfucker out here, like, waving around the Spanish flag. That's a bunch of bullshit. Look know? at him just That's waving around his Portuguese sausage all up in yeah. our faces. <laughs> Acting like he, he knows me. He's walking around with his olive skin amongst our olive skin. <laughs> Acting like he knows something with a, about with, the Iberian with Peninsula. His, with his <laughs> language that sounds like the closest other language to our language. I have a not a very good grasp of uh, language. Okay. I'm just going to let you know that right now. I don't know what the fuck French is. To though. me, you know, French just forgets the consonants. Yeah. They're like, yeah, yeah, we put those consonants in to make it's us a joke. look fancy. We are too busy drinking wine and making love. Yeah, exactly. They got more shit to uh, figure Marquis out. de Lafayette said that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Accurate. Go listen to the Lafayette episodes. All the Lafayette episodes. You should. He's great. I love him. Yeah. He's one of my favorites. So, uh, Magellan married a uh, Spanish uh, noblewoman uh, she, from a noble, noble family. Cool. Uh, her name was Maria Caldera Beatriz Barbosa. Barbosa. Yeah. I used to work there. Uh, Barbosa is a very common surname in Spain. Very common. But that gave him Spanish uh, citizenship. Mm. So, so he was now well-connected 
in Spain, at least as connected as he Who was. Who did he pull Portugal. that off? He was like at a bar, and he's like, "I'm in love he, with you." He met her father. He became pretty good friends with his father-in-law. He's like, "I'm in love with her," and he courted his daughter. Yeah, and married his daughter very quickly. Very so, quickly. He knew so, what he was doing. so he was fluent in the language of love. Yes, yes, indeed. Well, even though he was Portuguese, he was still of noble blood. But he was distrusted on all sides, though, because Spanish people, again, were like, Portuguese motherfucker hanging around here. And then the Portuguese were like, traitor? <laughs> you know. It's like the Jets and the Sharks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so King Manuel uh, declared him a traitor. Not mm-hmm. really right away. Uh, he did it a little he bit later. He got around to it. He actually begged Magellan to come back once he realized that Magellan was pitching the same idea to the Spanish Please, king. Please, Magellan, I love you. Yeah. Magellan, and I took the back. journey. I'm sorry. Yeah. Before I kind of get into all of that, uh, let me let me get to the new king of Spain. There's a new one. There's a new king of Spain. All right. There's a new king in town. He's 18 years old. Oh. oh. Young, hot, like yeah, dreamboat. Young, ooh, he yeah. got there. He uh, got there. A, t- a typical Steve Chalamet. He got ooh, there. Oh yeah, I was picturing mm. River Phoenix, but also just Robbie from. Kroger well, Kai. he was the new king of Spain. Mm-hmm. Uh, he got there one year before Magellan did. He was Flemish. He grew up speaking Flemish and drinking German beer and shit like that. I cool. like him already. He was not a Spaniard by mm. any stretch of the imagination. He was a Habsburg. By the oh, way. I know this one. So, pictures. if you look up a picture of this man, Charles I of Spain. Now, let me. I'll, I'll, I'll talk more about his name. But Charles I of Spain, uh, he had a giant jaw. Like, look at any of those pictures of the of. of oh, I oh saw is he one of those? Big old oh. jaw. This, he looks like a freakazoid. The, man. Th- this guy <laughs> that, that uh, gives uh, fucking Bruce Campbell a run for his money when it comes to his chin, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. He has like yeah. a massive yeah. underbite. He massive looks like underbite. Jay, Le- Jay Leno got drawn by like a caricature artist. Oh yeah. <laughs> Not yeah. even fucking no. around. <laughs> he was actually a pretty good king, honestly. He he was aware of yeah, but he his ugly. antecedents. He was very ugly. But he was a pretty good, decent king. He didn't know any Castilian. He didn't know any Spanish, anything like that. Um, He tried his best, though. So when Magellan came to him, they were both new to Spain. Okay. Pretty new to Spain. And there might be something to that, like why they got along in that way. Because they were both new and that sort of... Strangers in strange lands. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. And... uh, so basically, when, when Charles I, uh, when his father died, basically his mother's side had, like, the Spanish crown and that stuff, right? And then his father was a Habsburg, so they had the the Austrian crown mm-hmm. and all this stuff. And, of course, the Holy Roman em- Emperor was his grandfather. And, of course, to get the crown for the Holy Roman Empire, you had to be elected by the electorate, right? Right. And in order to be elected by the electorate, you have to bribe everybody with a shit ton of money. As you do. And so he wanted to be. So he bribed them with a shit ton of money. So he was really in debt. Really in debt. It's not bribing, it's for your consideration. Yes, exactly. (laughs) I do like how they're like, oh, the guy who has made himself the most broke, let's have him... Yeah. Run everything. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, Th- this guy's really when, good with his money. Let's <laughs> let, let's hook him up. He gave all his money away to us. So when he became Holy Roman Emperor, he was Charles the mm. Fifth. So he's Charles the First of Spain. In Spain, he's Charles the First, first King Charles. But in, in the Spain. Holy Roman Empire, in the Holy Roman Empire, yeah. he's Charles the Fifth. That is the so most European Charles, thing I've ever heard. Yeah, <laughs> Charles V is the same person as Charles I. I just want you to understand that. That's well, exhausting. they both sound like dildos. It is. Yeah, thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. So the thing was, is that the Spanish crown was supposed to go to Charles's mother, but Charles's mother was declared insane. In the membrane? Insane in the membrane. <laughs> Inside of the, the brain. brain. <laughs> uh, I guess she wanted some level of uh, well, rights for women. We don't know, <laughs> uh, but the thing is, is uh, women could be declared insane for any number of reasons. So it's it's hard to really pin that down. 
It could have been like uh, because she thought demons were coming from the sky, or it could have been because she thought maybe a man should cook dinner. It's it's <laughs> a real wide swath. They were like, women be shopping. She's insane. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, if you remember, this is the same Charles of Spain that gave the Knights Hospitaller the island of Malta. Oh, yeah. yeah. Pretty yeah. cool guy. Yeah. It's like and, we did an episode on that or and something. And he want, he was the one that wanted the, in exchange, he, every year he wanted a Maltese falcon. He, he was the one. He was like, like, like the movie. Like That's the right. film. So Magellan went to Chuck. He gave him the pitch. Now the pitch, here's, here's the full pitch. This is an economic mission to find a passage to the Spice Islands, the Moluccas, by sailing west and avoiding Portuguese waters and going around that very dangerous Cape of Good Hope. Mm. This is as bad as the uh, Drake's Passage? Uh, the uh, uh, Cape of... Cape Horn? Cape Horn. Cape Horn. Cape Horn. Yeah, like it. Yeah. Uh, it is almost as bad, if not... It, it's comparable to Drake's Passage and the Cape and Cape Horn. At the southern tip of South America. Did I make a joke about how uh, it's named after how awful Drake's music is? Oh, yes, yeah, several times. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Every time and I also Drake. made a joke about how Cape Horn sounds like gay porn. Gay porn, porn yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did do uh, that. We We've that. had a lot of episodes now. We went on a lot of crazy adventures, guys. <laughs> and if you recall, I, I mentioned Dark Souls and yes. Drake's. Yes. Yeah. Because I was expecting dragons, but no. Now, there were zero dragons nah, I'm in this one. I, I now, hate the, it. The thing is, is this is not an original idea to, to sail west to get to the Spice Islands. You know, this is not original. Columbus did this, and he failed. In fact, the, the biggest proponent against Columbus discovering the New World, like we say that now, we say that in, in yeah. 2021, we say Columbus didn't discover the New World because world he didn't. Yeah. But in his day, the biggest, loudest voice for Columbus not discovering the New World was Columbus. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they, shit. they were like, you discovered a New World. And he was like, no, I didn't. It's like, I just I went discovered, over there and cut off hands and shit. I discovered the Indies, buddy. The, no, that's and he called, them, he called them the West Indies. The West Indies. Because he's an idiot. Yeah, I went uh, over, I discovered the West Indies. I found, like, uh, clerks over there, Desperado. Uh, Pulp Fiction. <laughs> he was the Harvey Weinstein Indie of his... movies is the way you're going. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Oh, now I get it. <laughs> now, the prevailing thought of the time was that this new continent that was discovered, the New World, extended from pole to pole. There was land from the North Pole all the way to the South Pole. That was the prevailing thought, and that there was no way through. But Panama was discovered... And they were like, how about we just go through, like, we blow up Panama and we go through it. Like the Panama Canal. I mean, they eventually did. Well, they were, at the time they were like, oh, uh, that's against God's will. And we're not going to do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, like, they, they didn't know about Van Halen at that uh, point in time. Oh, you beat me to it. <laughs> I, was just, that, I think blowing up Panama that, while listening to Panama <laughs> is the most that massive that thing fucking you can do. East, right. atheist uh, Roosevelt. Yeah. That's yeah. what I say about it. Yeah, exactly. But there was a rumor. There was a rumor. It was nothing more than a rumor that at the south end of what we call now South America, there was a way to get to the South Sea. Oh, on the Drake's other side. Passage? Well, They can listen to Hot no. Blind Bling the whole time. and like. I mean, yes and no, but no. Uh, there was a way to get through. And Drake's Passage is a way through. But but they wouldn't find that until the English explorer, Drake. Oh yeah, they didn't have anyway, to. Oh so they story for a different day. They didn't have to listen to that horrible song, Hot Blight and Blame. Yeah, no. Which I've mentioned oh. many times. I we mean, get we know how much you don't like that song, Chris. I know. Uh, I've never even it. fucking heard that song. Neither have I. I know how much you hate. <laughs> I've only heard it once. It ruined my life. Everything in my life has fallen apart. But furthermore, and here's the important part, is that. Magellan was going to prove that the Spice Islands existed in Spanish waters according to the Treaty of Tordesillas. Now, he told the same thing to the Portuguese yeah. king. He said, the Spice Islands are in Portuguese waters. But he turned around and told you know, Charles I, he's like, 
It's in Spanish waters. I can make the it work. point is, is that no one knew whose waters they were in. Yeah. You know, because nobody knew what was on the other side of the globe, right? So he was going to figure it out, right? That that was sort of the point of it. But it was to get the spice, right? The spice must flow. Yeah, it's the key to space travel. Uh, in, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> Man, if they hadn't used all that saffron, we could be flying through space. Yeah. And it's so expensive, that saffron. <laughs> yeah. Oh my I god, mean, it's like $20 for a fucking vial. It's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, but if you... It's because you could fly through space with it. Yeah. Well, you, you have to rail it or either shove it up your asshole, but, you know. Yeah. How come it's always shoving it, shoving things up your asshole in order to get the full effect? Well, it's yeah. that's it, where it, you it's absorb the, things most could, deeply, Jerry. You can put the saffron into the sim sim card hole in your phone, and you'll get a pretty good connection <laughs> off of that. Yeah, <laughs> I heard that this is true. So again, it was incredibly risky for anyone to finance one of these voyages that Magellan's talking about, because he's again he's talking about. You know, going into the New World, a place that is only recently discovered, and by them at least, finding some theoretical way through. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, on the other hand, if you were an investor and you did get some sort of percentage out of it, you were literally made for life. If you got boats, especially five boats coming back, full of, of cloves... You're you are set for life. Like you are rich beyond your wildest imagination. And also, five boats at that point in time was nothing. Like uh, it's not a huge investment. Uh, not uh, to Spain at this time. It was okay uh, because again he's in debt. There was another uh, somebody that lended the king of Spain money. It was the House of Fugger, and the king was into it. The thing was though is there's a hurdle. You have to cross because after Columbus, oh, I thought it was the House of Hurdle. And after, <laughs> <laughs> after after a certain amount of people uh, went to the New World, they they set up this. It was the the House of Trade or House of Commerce, right? House of the Right. It, it's Sorry. called ooh, ooh, ooh. Casa de Contratación. Casa, Casa de Contratación. De there you go. Casa del Queso. Uh, and it was yeah. run. It was run by a bishop, an archbishop named named. Uh, Juan Rodriguez de Fonseca. And uh, the thing was, is you needed his blessing in order to have a voyage. And it was both a gift and a curse in a lot of ways, because Spanish courts and Portuguese courts, all this stuff, they were just rife with, you know, corruption and double dealing and stuff like this. You know, it, it was... It was nasty, you know. But, but you needed his go-ahead. This whole thing is, like, sounds like you order a pizza, right? And, <laughs> yeah. And okay. I'm you, following. So you order a pizza with a bunch of your friends, <laughs> but they bring the pizza uncut, and then you got to figure out it's not just slice, 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 slice. Everybody wants weird slices. They're like, get out that weird pizza. So well, I put in ten dollars, so yeah. I get this much. So I get this weird slice. Yeah. And it's I, also, I'm, I'm, I'm tracing over the slice of pepperoni. Mm. You asked for like one third Hawaiian, one third up. Uh, Pepperoni and pepperoni, which is the best pizza. No, no. Like one third, meat I don't lovers. know, meat lovers. Oh, yeah. and, and olives nobody, and olives. yeah. And then, <laughs> and then another third, which doesn't add up. Olives, olives, olives. <laughs> every kind of olive. Yeah, that was and, one guy. Yeah. And he's like, <laughs> I want olives, I want green onions, and I want them to be piled on so high that I can't see them. I want to make the sky dark with olives. <laughs> Also, Dang. that one third needs to be a deep dish, while the rest of it's thin crust. Somehow, <laughs> yeah, Ma make it happen. And they did their best. The pizza place did their best, but it's a fucking mess. The, and now you wait. have to fucking cut the pizzas. Is the pizza place the world? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 Right. Also, the, the pizza is the, the world. pizza is the world. And also, you're cut from your voyage, right? They agreed. Agreed to Magellan's crazy trip and the thing was is like he showed him a map of his whole his whole plan but a very crucial part of the map was sort of left ob obscured yeah which is the strait that he thought was going to be there right basically the reason for this was is that uh he didn't want somebody to look at his map and have the king of spain give it to somebody else 
<laughs> or he didn't want the king of Spain to send somebody else after him to do the same thing. Don't copy my map, bro. I yeah. get it. Sorry, yeah. so the strait he's talking about mm -hmm. is still where? It's in, the, it's in the south end of South America, but okay. it's rumored, right? It's rumored. The strait of that it's Magellan. Yes. But uh, if he doesn't, if that doesn't exist, he has to go down to the uh, Drake's Passage. They don't even know that's there yet. But but they will. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And All of the dragons will be right there. Bling. I've never made that joke before. Yeah, no, this no. episode. People from all over joined his crew. There there were Frenchmen. There were uh, a lot of people. Jews joined the crew, and that, like this is in a, in a time where the previous administration, you know, Queen uh, Queen Isabella and, and King Ferdinand, like they had the. Uh, Spanish Inquisition to purge mm -hmm. Spain mm -hmm. of Jewish people yeah. and the Moors, right? So people weren't uh, okay with Jews until Seinfeld. <laughs> That's still not not true. <laughs> yeah, tell them that to QAnon. I'm not <laughs> saying that was okay. I love Seinfeld. Yeah, and Larry David. They were roustabouts. They were adventurers, Big time. all speaking different languages. But on on board when they had to do shit. They spoke a, a maritime Castilian. And what this was, was it was Castilian, but it was, it was tailored mm -hmm. to, okay, this is a yard arm. This is a mast. You know, so everybody on board, no matter what language you spoke, you could still speak a common sort of you, language you to get shit done. You spoke the tongue that was common to you, so like, this but is you this. pinched your fingers yeah. and you yelled at the other yeah. guy. So basically, when you're on board the ship, they had their own basic. Yes. Like, like, like in Star Wars or any sort yeah. of like... Uh, uh, any sci-fi nonsense. Uh, English yes. is not known as English. That's well, the alphabet basic. in Star Wars is Arabish, but they do speak Galactic Basic uh, commonly, yes. Oh, God. What? I think I just fucking regained my virginity somehow just by <laughs> listening to you. <laughs> well, we're all... The rest of us are married, Jerry, so this we know what it's like. Uh... No, I'm sorry, You're I'm not going into child. distinctions about Huddies, okay? <laughs> <laughs> now, Magellan had a, a partner. He was this brilliant cosmologist, and he had all these tools of the time. All, did he have an know, astrolabe? He had an astrolabe. He had yes. Fuck yeah, he cutting did. Edge. He had cutting edge tools of the time, these compasses, these astrolabes, all this stuff, star charts, stuff like this. And his name was... Did he have a scythe? He did not have a scythe. You don't know that. He had an astro scythe. <laughs> Ooh. His partner's name was Rui Fierro. He was brilliant, by all accounts. He and sounds he was, hot. He was a re renaissance man, in, in, the truest, so. in the truest uh, sense of the word, Fierro was. But he was mentally unstable. Which is um, also, I think, a prerequisite to be... A renaissance man. Yeah, 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 a little bit, yeah. You're like, you have to be a real, like, pain in the ass. Like, how do we, how, how are we, how are we getting where we're going? He's like, I sculpted it. You think Da Vinci <laughs> was a fun guy to be around? Probably not. Well, you also know that the sex is gonna be banging hot, you know? <laughs> yeah, when they're crazy, the sex is always good. Am I right, guys? <laughs> Jesus. I haven't had sex with these dudes. Welcome to the know. bro cast, everybody. Oh, God. Jesus no, thank fucking you. No, we're not Joe Rogan here. Uh, but no, uh... Well, yeah, we're all vaccinated. Yeah. yeah. Hey! Hey! Uh, there was a man in the uh, Casa de Contratacion. Uh, Contratacion. Contratacion. Say that, with the passion. I know, yeah. Uh, the uh, Contratacion. Like it's actually it easier to say drunk, actually. It's actually easier to say that way. But no, uh, he was a newcomer to, to this sort of... Uh, governing administrative body, and he offered to lobby uh, uh, on Magellan's behalf in in exchange for twenty percent of the profits, which is a big cut. But still, it, it makes it possible, right? It makes this whole trip possible. When Fierro found out about it, he flew off the rails, and he got so mad that this guy was trying to insert himself into this trip, and he so much so that even Magellan like backed down. And it, he, you know, this guy, he was reprimanded. It didn't really 
go anywhere, but they figured it out anyway. But he, as they were, like, making preparations to leave, he started, you know, not sleeping. He was wandering around, and he w- he would go around and, and scream at people and yell at people, fly off the rails. And, like, even even the king, Charles I, was like, this guy's kind of unhinged, you know what I mean? He's and like, he but would, have you looked at all of his astrolabes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was... He was declared, sorry, he was declared unfit to mm. go, which is a big blow to Magellan, but again, Magellan's a single-minded individual, and he sacrificed his friend for this. He said, I'm sorry, man, but, you yeah, know. fuck him. Yeah. It's, uh, like, it's like you're in a band, and that they're like, listen, your lead singer, it's like, you're going to be signed on to a major label. And they're yeah. like to this lead singer, we can't sell this. We can't sell this. You gotta get him out of here. Yeah. You gotta get a new dude. And they're like, all right, I guess we'll we're kicking him out of the band. And that band grew up to be Pink Floyd. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. You're you're talking that, about Sid. Uh, Sid. Sid. Uh, uh, Barrett. Uh, Sid, Sid Barrett. Barrett. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. You gotta get this that guy Sid motherfucker out of here. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and he, this and welcome to Disgraceland, the podcast where we talk about rock and roll, baby. <laughs> I've never heard that podcast. That's a I, fantastic podcast. It's, yeah. it's a great podcast. I, they really don't need dis- a plug, but yeah. yeah I, fuck him. We're not plugging them. I'm really disappointed that you didn't go with uh, Van Halen with uh, David Lee Roth and uh, uh, Sam Hall. I don't fucking listen to Van Halen. I listen to Pink Floyd. Oh, I well, mean, you I'm might really- as well just jump. Yeah, you might as well you might as well just jump to your death. Which is their best song. <laughs> that what? Oh my god. That, no. It's their worst song. There's types of people. Uh not just, you know, adventure, but when they join, there there's certain types, right? There there's a hierarchy of of people on the trip, on the voyage, right? And I want you guys to understand this. So you got you got your common sailors, yeah. right? And these guys They'd been apprentices before, uh, so they know they have their job. They know what they're doing. You know, this is like your key grip, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. On a movie set, you know, this is your your grips, yeah. right? Your electricians, your grips. They mm-hmm. know what they're doing. They're salty dogs. You yeah. know what I mean? Where, where's the best boys at? Well, that's your apprentices. So your apprentices do the dangerous work, do the grunt work. Mm. They they are the ones that are climbing up into everything. They spring into action, you know. They're your younger guys, you know. Yeah. Mean younger guys meaning like seven, seventeen to twenty three. Yeah, they're, they're, they're your so, green hands. Yeah, they're, they're mm-hmm. not part of the union just yeah. yet. Tom uh, Holland from that uh, from from the Essex. in that movie. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah uh, the in, the, in the heart of the sea. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and then you have your specialists, and your specialists could be uh, gunners. That mm-hmm. just take care of the guns and everything like that. They sound maintain guys. all of that. Yeah. You got your sound guys. Yeah. Uh, you got you got your barber, which is sort of a misnomer because trimming beards and stuff was sort of the least of his troubles. He was also a surgeon, pulling teeth, doctor. <laughs> uh, he was a dentist. He did all that kind of stuff. That was your barber. I'm gonna right? be honest. Last time I got a haircut, I was pretty pissed that he didn't pull out my bad teeth. Oh, you felt robbed by the dentist. Yeah, he big time. Or, or by the by the barber because he didn't pull your teeth. He wasn't also a dentist. Yeah, that's that exactly right. That's bullshit. Barbers should be dentists. Just saying. Set it here. And dentists should be barbers. Yes, vice versa. One stop shop, folks. Anyway, then you had divers, and divers. Their job, very important, was to dive underneath the ship because again, swimming at this time was only a couple of people knew how to swim, right? So yeah. you had people who knew how to swim. And what's the uh, gear? Like, none. Oh, uh, you got Zero? into your skivvies, and you dove underneath the ship. Jesus Christ. Yeah, they yeah. didn't have uh, pools for people to learn to swim when they were kids. No, 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 no. Your so daddy I'm, tossed you in the water, and that's my it. My parents uh, <laughs> took me uh, for swimming lessons every year, and then I hated it. I hated it I so hated much. It I so hate swimming. Much. I still hate swimming. Yeah. I could swim to save my life. Thanks to my parents. I'm 100% with you. Thanks However, to my parents, I can swim to save my life. the last time, I think I Not was like fun. 11, 12 years old, it was summer, sw- swimming lessons, I woke up early and hid in the woods. Nice. My Good mom, for you. My mom comes home and she sees me there and she was so pissed. I bet. So pissed. I've oh, never man. seen my mom. You already. guys are crazy. I'm a belly boy just floating in the pool. I love it. Give me another beer. And then you, of course, you, of course, had officers. You know, gentlemen. You had officers and your captains. 
And like, you know, captains had their own space, their own quarters, and they were cramped, but they had their own quarters. Uh, and then you had, uh, there was no such thing as a cook in this time. Who's the making the food? They would rotate. Mm. Uh-oh. Because. That sounds like a bad idea. Being a cook. I disagree. Everyone learns how to cook. They're all, they enjoy each other's well, food. Well, being a cook was uh, an insult. It was looked what? down. It was looked down upon. In fact, some of the biggest fighting words you could say at this time to somebody else is, Your beard smells of smoke. Ooh. Meaning, you've been cooking, haven't you? you I know. hate this because I... I love to cook. Yeah. <laughs> I Not... love food. <laughs> yeah. I've learned to love to cook. Well, I always kind of liked it, but I've cooked... 50% of my cooking has been during COVID. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chris but... is a house husband, and... Um, oh, that's true. And yeah, it's Occasionally I tell him that his beard smells of the vacuum, and he becomes incensed. He flips up. Well, I'm not... I know that's not true because my beard is very uh, patchy and small. Yeah, it can't hold the scent to save <laughs> sure, its life. You're like also <laughs> I, exactly. I have hardwood floors that uh, carry very little dust. So uh, you know, you're smelling like cats. Yeah, closest thing to dusters you have in the house. That's true. And then they had uh, uh, pages. And like uh, Kenneth, there's there's two types of pages. There's ones from the royal, well-to-do, noble families. Uh, and Let they, me go on your ship, father. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you, you'd get a noble family, like, go out onto the ship and, and learn, how, learn a trade, learn how to be a yeah. man. And what they would do was, uh, they're timekeeping pieces. They didn't have chronometers back then. What they had, and this sounds crazy, but it's true. And I can't believe that they kept this up the whole time. But what, what it was, is it was simply an hourglass. And it was crucial, crucial to the voyage to turn that hourglass over Jesus when it ran out. Christ. And this could be, an hourglass is a mis misnomer, but it was about a half an hour. Oh. How, every half hour, Holy shit. no matter what, this this thing must be turned over. So these it guys, crucial. These guys had to be part of a union where every half hour it's a page. They, they had somebody just well, flipping it's a, it. It's a page, and pages. Oh, you have to give the rich kids that job. Yeah, yeah. Pages. They don't have to cook. They got the light work. Uh, the rich pages got the I'd light work. I fucking murder somebody to not have to turn a fucking thing every thirty minutes. Yeah, I'd rather order and, that, the and, and keep in mind yeah. that's thirty minutes all day and all night. Yeah. So, they, of course, they rotate. 48 They rotate, you know. And uh, the thing was, yeah, they got, they got the lighter duties, such as turning the hourglass, right? And then no, no page... I'd rather be flipping a skillet 37 yeah. times a minute, you know what no, I mean? No, <laughs> yeah. no, no page was under the like age... Cooking. Yeah, I love it. Under the age of 15. No page was under the age of 15. Okay, so... They were usually from the age of 8 to 12. Okay, and then there was the other type of page. This page was in in, yeah, in port in port cities. Uh, you'd find orphans and street urchins, and they would uh, be kidnapped, basically, like taken <laughs> off the street and forced into like, servitude. Let's, you pick my pocket, I'm gonna put you on the boat. Yeah, uh, and they're, they're Cockney. Uh, they're Cockney now. Uh, all that orphans. was my Spanish accent. Yeah. All orphans are cockney. <laughs> we all know this. Yeah, they're covered in soot. Yeah, and toe. Uh, and uh, and but dough. <laughs> they would have the the That's really funny. shitty work, the really bad work. Uh, they would even, uh, and some of the uh, upper echelon page pages would also do this. But they would do that. I, I felt when I read this, I was like, "This is fucking bizarre." They would. Shave the legs of the officers and clip their toenails. Hmm. Oh man, that sounds I'm, great. I mean, now, I mean, sometimes you just need to have a spa day. I didn't. When I you're didn't on know, a cruise. <laughs> well, I didn't know that the officers during this time wanted their legs shaved. I well, mean, they I shaved the, my legs. They had the culottes, right? Right. right yeah. And so yeah. it exposed a bit of leg. I thought it was so. They're wearing it, those capris. From like yeah. the late, it pinches the hair. Late nineties, right? yeah. early two thousands. Cool lots. Uh, <laughs> but what this did is it sort of set up 
like a a, a a weird familiarity between the officers and their pages. Uh, so much so that it was uh, pretty well known that some officers would uh, use pages for yeah. sexual uh, Fucking things. Knew it. Yeah. Uh, they would rape their, their pages while at sea. That's that's fucked. I don't care what time it's in. To to yeah. to to rape children is not okay with me. I'm sorry. I don't care what time no, we it, live in. No, no, no. Yeah. I agree wholeheartedly. It's just not cool. I'm sorry. We it's joking not, around not okay. like you're over here being like. In the show, I, it's been a long time since we've done kind of a serious episode, but in the show we do explore the uncomfortable truths agree. of history. So the king's promise to this voyage to Magellan. Here it was. Here, here's because the king gets the the lion's share of the money, right? He's with all king. of this, but he has to promise these people a certain amount of certain things. Here is what the king promised Magellan: that he would have a monopoly on the discovered route for a period of ten years. All right. all right. And what they found, and all that for ten years. Their appointment as governors of these said lands, and anything that they found. With five percent of the resulting net gains, so you, you're you're a governor after you you monopolize for ten years, and then you get five percent of the net gains of uh, anything taken out of there from the Spanish crown. Not a bad deal. Not bad, honestly. Not right. bad. Who Pretty good. The, who who gets the uh, the merchandising rights? <laughs> well, technically, being a governor of of a newly claimed Spanish. A colony would be merchandising. Like so this. they're That's making action figures. Five, you no. got five percent of sales. I'm, I'm talking shirts. I'm talking uh, you, shells with the location. Get that early Jawa figure with yeah. the actual like uh, cloth. fabric. Yeah. Cloth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm just I'm talking merch, merch, merch. You, you also, you also, get the right to levy one thousand ducats on upcoming trips, mm -hmm. uh, paying only five percent on the remainder. I love ducats. What are ducats? Now, Jerry, can you explain? Yes. Can you please explain ducats? There's a lot of different currencies in Spain at the time, and, and really in Europe at the time. A lot of different currencies. And things that we... We don't really have a measuring scale to measure modern dollars on, but most of Magellan's financing was measured in Meravedi. Uh, that was the currency. They didn't have euros. Meravedi. Yeah. Yeah. So can, can can we say canonically speaking for our history boys that ducats are in fact uh, pails? I of, would say of that they're like and, and jewels. Thank they're you. Like, That's what I'm imagining. I, I, th they're like silver coins, basically. Wait, it's not two scoops of raisins. <laughs> <laughs> One ducat is two scoops of raisins. Yeah. Uh, it's exchange rate. So if also, someone says they're going to give you six. <laughs> Ducats, that's actually 12 scoops of raisins. Don't get it twisted. That's a lot of raisins, my friend. How hey, much I... way too many raisins. What are you doing? If you want... If you want raisin bran, you gotta have raisins. No, it's just... <laughs> it's not raisin bran anymore. It's just raisins. raisins. <laughs> now, the thing... Yeah. <laughs> Box of raisins. Now, now the thing is... <laughs> Put that is, in your fucking cereal. Uh, you would, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, he would also grant an island for each captain of the ship. Fuck right? yes. Excluding the six richest islands, which, which are the actual real spice islands. It's like but the Mormons else, getting yeah. their own planet. Yeah, kind yeah. of. Yeah. They would receive a 15th of all profits made from the six richest islands. Not bad. Okay, which is really good. Again, you're going to be richest beyond your wildest dreams. You'll be a Jeff Maybe. Bezos. Maybe. If you do. If you pull this off, you're going to be rich rich beyond your wildest dreams. Uh, the, way, the way you're selling it to me sounds like um, the Monopoly game at McDonald's. Dude. If you find Boardwalk and uh, Park Place... You're gonna be rich beyond your wildest. Am I dreams. wrong that everybody found one of them? And oh that's yeah, how yeah, they yeah. That, that's that's the scam. They, they like, made a documentary shit, about it on HBO. Play. It's really and good. The whole it's, game is rigged. It's that. really good. The mob oh, controls all yeah, of it. Yeah, the mob controlled yeah. the whole thing. So so they're outfitting Magellan ships, right? And and they're making sure that they have everything. And this is a rigorous task. This is something you really have to focus on. Making sure they all match. Well, well, you, you <laughs> got to make sure you have like 
everything from the most minuscule things like nails yeah. and trading stuff to enough food and enough provisions, you know, to carry you. And in fact, like, uh, provisions were the most necessary. And uh, You can't eat nails. No. And, and most of the provisions, almost the full thing, was spent on two things. Wine and hardtack. The Sounds rest, about right. The rest, they had salted fish. They had a couple other things, you know. Uh, actually, the officers... Some lutefisk. The officers had had a certain amount of a jam, a jelly, uh, made from quince. And quince is like an apple pear type fruit okay. that they that they make like a like a preservative out of. But one thing that happened while while he's outfitting his ships is uh, it's customary to raise a couple of flags that that denote your voyage and what's going on. You know, it's the king's flag. It's, it's the flag of Spain, but then, you know, you have the captain's flag, which is Bright like their flag. coat of arms and yeah. stuff like this. And, uh, it's, you know... It is June. It yeah, is. it is June. So you uh, raise the pride flag and you're raising hell. Happy pride, everyone. Anyway, uh, Magellan's coat of arms that he wrote, that, that he flew, because he's Portuguese, looks an awful lot like the Portuguese flag. You know, there's Portuguese elements in it. He's from Portugal. You know, and to the untrained eye, it looks like a Portuguese thing. You know what I mean? So the so, Spanish were none too happy. Well, the second they started flying this flag, onlookers started being like, hey, what the fuck is that shit? Because it's a lot like, for them, it's like it's like flying the swastika. Yeah. Mm. It's bad. They're like, what the fuck is that? And and they're like, hey, man, you got is like... Before, this, before the Nazi thing, it was a Native American thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's like well, the well, Confederate flag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is only a Run battle that flag. Seattle. It's not a. It's not a. Anyway, no, oh, no. It's it's a battle flag. It's not even really their main flag. It's not their main shit. Anyway, oh, no, that uh, is true. A yeah, bunch of fucking losers. It's a loser yeah, flag. Yeah, the real flag is is a white flag. That's a real flag. Anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you got him, Jerry. Got him. Roasted. Uh, anyway, we uh, did it. You heard it first here at the History Boys. They got this crowd gathering around, and they're getting unruly. And so, people are telling Magellan, hey, dude, you gotta take that shit down. And he's like, no, this is customary, this is what we do. I don't care if they don't understand what this is, I'm not taking it down. This is my flag, I'm the fucking Captain General of this fucking voyage. I'm not doing that. So they rioted. <laughs> Magellan's pilot, uh, for one of his ships, was stabbed. Oh! Uh, they, they, people got mad. He was like the Dixie Chicks in fucking... 2003. This really illustrates the supreme distrust to anyone that is simply Portuguese. Anyone at all. It displays that. And, like, they're not fucking around. When I say that Spanish and Portuguese just hate each other, it, even down to the common citizen, it went that far. They, they eventually smoothed it over, but, but it, it was a thing. You know what I mean? It was not a good omen. Yeah. You know? But I want to uh, describe to you a couple of notable people that I want you to know before we begin okay. that are going to join Magellan. Oh, uh, Thor? No. Hercules? No. Jose Canseco? <laughs> I mean, that's closer than those others. <laughs> because he's At real. Least Spanish. <laughs> At least it's a Spanish name. Yeah. Derek Zoolander. One of them, I think he might be my favorite, uh, if there is to pick a favorite oh, from the, the crew. Oh, the Marquis de Lafayette. No. I know that's like no. several centuries later. Uh, the 30-year-old Italian Antonio Pigafetta. Ah, mamma mia. Ooh, Antonio okay. Pigafetta. I mean, he liked pasta. Oh, yeah. Is that insensitive? I don't know, probably. I love <laughs> pasta. Who does it? I don't know, man. Assuming somebody likes pastas and... Because they're Italian? Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> assuming somebody likes pasta is fine. Assuming somebody likes pasta because they're Italian. Mm, maybe. <laughs> I feel like because there's a good chance they're going to be like, yeah, I like pasta. Don't assume everybody... Uh, yeah. There's nobody alive that don't like pasta. Yeah, right? Fuck you. If you don't it's like delicious. pasta, you're a monster. Yeah. Yeah. 
If you don't like pasta, you're Monsters not. have liked pasta. Yeah. Write us at historyboys.com, uh, right, historyboyspodcast at gmail.com. Uh, Send all hate mail to Chris Whedon. And, uh, as per, yes. Uh, Chris Whedon. Uh, care of pasta. We care of pasta. <laughs> <laughs> no, Antonio Pigafetta, uh, he was a, a renaissance man as well. He was a mathematician. He was a lot of things. He actually served... The Knights of Rhodes. Oh. The Knights cool. Hospitaller yeah. while they were I in it. Rhodes. I got it. Before the Siege of Rhodes. Okay? So he got Ooh. the fuck out of there. Did yeah. he get out? Before? He left. He, yeah, he left just before. He's like, I see the so, writing on the wall. I got to bounce. The Siege of Rhodes was 1522. This is like 1517. Oh, oh shit. Wow. Well, no, 1519. We're in 1519. So it's like these Couple are years later, pretty much right yeah. around the same time. Yeah, totally. Seizure Rhodes would happen while he's at sea. Okay. You know. Yeah, he, he was a supernumerary. And basically what happened is that he heard that Magellan was doing this. And he was sort of seeing the world at the time. But but he lusted for adventure. I mean, he had been with the Knights House Spittler. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. no more adventure than that, right? Yeah. So he wanted more adventure. Sailing on the high seas, man. So he he petitioned to get aboard Magellan's ship as a supernumerary. And what that was was uh, they were like, okay, yeah, you are Magellan's private secretary. And so Magellan's like, you know what you're going to do, man? You're going to write a chronicle of this whole trip. Not not the ship logs, not the dry ship logs, cap, you know, the pilot's logs. You're going to write the good shit. We're going to talk about the trip, you know, what well, you see, Star what Trek you find, hit. what we all find, you know, like all that stuff. That's what you're going to write about. And he was like, yes, 100%. I'm totally down. That actually sounds dope. Yeah, and, and so he was totally loyal to Magellan. I'm just saying, totally that actually loyal. sounds like pretty good. He's like, it's pretty good. how dope this is. Yeah. Write down everything you see. You know, and he was like, hell yeah, I'm in. But there was another man. And he was sent by the bishop because he was the bishop's quote-unquote nephew. Now, what this meant at the time was illegitimate son. Ugh, yeah. Squaresville. Yeah. So remember the ar- ar- arch- archbishop that you had to get in good with, uh, Fonseco? It was his illegitimate son. And his name was Juan de Cartagena. And well, he was just probably like the biggest fucking square ever. Didn't like to party, sucked at everything, and everybody hated him. Well, he was Spanish, so he immediately hated Magellan because yeah. he was Portuguese. Cartagena was given command over one of the ships, the San Antonio, which was the biggest ship. It was kind of a fuck you to Magellan, or at least like a checks and balances thing, because Cartagena actually had a bigger salary mm-hmm. than Magellan had, and he was also given like all these things where it's like, okay, if you're gonna trade with people, you gotta go through me first, just to make sure that you're not enriching yourself on trading with people. You know what I mean? Is that the whole deal, point? Though. Well, yeah, but like on the way to the Spice Islands, you're not gonna fill your own pockets. He's not the first. He's fail looking son. out. He's looking out for the king's interests. Right? He's right. so a fucking narc, so dude. It, he's a narc. So yeah. at any point, he could say, "No, you're not doing that. That's not in the king's interest." Yeah. Well, so you know what? Him. Snitches get It'll... stitches, you little bitch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anything can happen on international waters, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and, and it wasn't more, more but like, dude, he got scurvy. Sorry, yeah. I don't know what happened. He got scurvy. He got eaten by sharks. End of story. Anyway, you're gonna, you're gonna find uh, out what happens. This cool guy wrote the whole story about it, and this lame guy wrote a way drier version. Anyway, so you're gonna you find read out what shit. you're gonna find out what happens to Juan de Cartagena. He had arguably maybe the most power and the most money on the ship for, for now. All, on the voyage. Uh, he was on a different ship because uh, Magellan's ship, the flagship of the voyage, was the Trinidad, but it wasn't the biggest ship. The thing was, is the rest, the rest of the ships were all commanded by Spaniards, and it wasn't odd to have co-captains, but it was kind of odd to have Magellan as the captain general, like the one, the guy. Right. You know what I mean? Mm. That was kind of weird, especially for a. Again, a Portuguese person commanding a predominantly Spanish fleet. You know what I mean? Like, they... 
it was just it, it again it was like having a Nazi command an American boat. It just whoa, whoa. you know what I mean? Right. Like I mean, uh, later, we're not I, saying that Fernand Magellan like was like really into like you know like uh, no, we're not. Well, they Eugenics. were all no. Well, let's keep in mind the Portuguese and the Spanish at this time are as genocidal as uh, the Nazis, not on an industrial scale, but on a f- uh, on like a fervor, Fundam- yeah, right. fundamental like a fervor, scale. fervor scale. Yeah, yeah. It, it, if you didn't submit to them, then yeah, they had it's no like problem. It's like having an Israeli captain on a Palestinian ship. There you go. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, there you go. And also, a lot of these Spanish captains, they looked upon Magellan as their social inferior, because he was he was of noble blood, but he was of noble Portuguese blood. So that made him of ah, low worth. low birth in Spain. He would in Spain he was nobody. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they were like, "Who's this piece of shit?" Like, and and like the king and the and the uh, contentacion, the casa de content. Contentacion. They were like, "Hey, you gotta have predominantly Spaniards. You can't just fill out your crew with Portuguese." Yeah. And he's like, "I'm not trying." Like, he had forty Portuguese, and he hid that from the Spanish. Uh, he had forty out of two seventy Portuguese, you and he had to hide guys. that. But he had French, <laughs> he had German, he had a bunch of bunch of people from a lot, they all over way the place. Less. Yes. <laughs> they just didn't want Portuguese on the on yeah. the voyage. Really. Yeah, it'd be gross. They didn't want that. Well, because what if what if he got to the Spice Islands and and all of a sudden went, oh, this is for Portugal? Yeah. You know what if he did that? You know what I mean? That was That's a thing. I would do. That was a fear. Uh, well, it wasn't Ferdinand and Isabel anymore, but no. uh, but but if if the Charles Charles the first yeah. and Manuel the first yeah, yeah. Uh, the first gay couple and uh, <laughs> <laughs> if, they, if, they, if they were like they're like uh, what if he gets there and he's just like. Just starts looking at everything and saying Portugal, 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 Portugal. Portugal. Yeah, that that was sort of their fear. Yeah, yeah. So a forty-year-old general cap, uh, Captain General Ferdinand Magellan, led this voyage. One now, foot in the grave. Yeah, to be forty at the time to go on a voyage. I mean, we talked about this in Essex. You wouldn't be over the age of thirty-five on on boats, even in their time. I'm and this was that. much later. I'm thirty-seven, and it makes me feel like shit. Yeah, Magellan was by far the oldest person there. I'm gonna be 38 in three months. <sighs> Might as well, I hope you have your funeral situation figured out. <laughs> <laughs> Just throw me in the trash. So, I, by the way, I I'm one of the youngest people. I, I'm a little old, older than Zach, but I actually I'm have the baby. My, I have love my funeral me. Uh, arrangements already made. Huh. Mm-hmm. I think I'm the only one here that has that. It's anyway. a beautifully so, written note that says. Throw me in the trash. Yeah, there you come. Uh, I have it tattooed all over my body where you can't see. So throw me in the trash. So I just had to recycle arrows. With <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this like blue bin me. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. So the five ships. His five ships. Trinidad, the flagship. Uh, there was the Victoria. Mm-hmm. There was a San Antonio, which is the largest ship, carried most of their supplies. It had all the honky tonk on it. <laughs> San Antonio. <laughs> then there was the Santiago and the Concepcion. Concepcion. Yeah. And those are the ships. All manned by uh, Spanish captains. Those last two are the majority of the Passion. And a couple of people you should know. Uh, all their names are really going to come up later. In future episodes, this is going to be a series, folks. I really want to take my time with this and and make sure that you understand this whole thing, because again, this is not some this is not what you learned in school. This this whole thing is insane. I'm telling it's, you, it's real shit, guys. It's going to be uh, insane. There's a couple of names I I do want to just mention up top, and that's Gaspar de Caseta hmm. and Luis de Mendoza. Oh, uh, I do remember that. Uh, couple of ships. Oh, you'll remember later. Anyway, so on August 10th, 1519, Magellan and his fleet, fleet of the Moluccas, uh, fleet de Moluccas, named after the uh, Philippine pronunciation of the Spice Islands, uh, they left uh, Seville. Seville is where they... Spain. Uh, yeah, where, where they uh, built their fleet, basically. So they left on, on August 10th. Uh, they stopped... Uh, at the Canary Islands to make 
you know, last minute preparations, look over a couple Get of things. Birds. Mm-hmm. Uh, they 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 bought a couple of new new things there, and uh, it was a little bit of holiday before the long trek. And and well, and and they were rushed. You know, it was last minute and it was rushed, and uh, it's too bad because all the stuff that they bought, uh, which was ample, they were cheated. They were cheated from the traders on the Canary Islands. Mm. Turns out the stuff that they sold them, they lied on their bill, bills of lading. <laughs> it wasn't as much as they said they sold them. Oh, And it was low shit. quality. Now, this is not just a cheat, and it's not just a fuck-up. Uh, this endangers every person's life mm-hmm. on this voyage. It would be a big deal much later. It's almost uh, like there should be laws against doing that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's like, oh no, you can just oh, assume no, people are going to do Oh no, my hard tack is of a lower quality. People are going to do the best. <laughs> people are going to do the right thing. We don't need laws. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, Magellan also found out a couple of pretty disturbing things uh, while at these islands. He got correspondence from his father-in-law, Barboza, that said, Hey man, the Portuguese are pissed. They're pissed. Not only are they dragging your name through the mug, mud in Portugal, uh, trying to discredit you and your entire family, they also ransacked your estate. It fell into disrepair. Uh, a new home was built over the top of it. They uh, presumably burnt it and just built something on the top of it and took like his crest down and uh, gave it the ultimate insult, which was covering it in shit. Huh. Uh, I was going to say it as a joke. I was like, ah, oh, they yeah. pooped on it. No, they pooped on it. Yeah, uh, no, they took it. He was declared a traitor. By his, fucking uh, Portugal should have fucking financed the thing. I know, I know. And and they begged him to come back, too. And they were like, come back to your sovereign, your real like, sovereign. Fuck. And he goes, dude, I can't, I can't just be, like, the Spanish king has been so good to me, I can just turn my back on him. And furthermore, how do I know that the second I get back to Portugal, they're not just going to arrest me and execute me? And, yeah. and they're like, well... The Portuguese king is going to reconsider your offer. And he's like, no, dude, I'm already building my fucking voyage. No. The Portuguese king... He's going to reconsider fucking throwing me in jail. He's like, I'm Spanish now. I changed my name. I changed my allegiance. Fuck you. I'm Spanish. Fuck you. The Portuguese king has said that your movie is going to be the hit of the summer. And that's only after they said, no way, go away, and you went to Warner Brothers. Yeah. And, uh... And, 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 like... He's like, I know it's a hot ticket. Yeah. And uh, I really feel like his story mirrors... What, James Gunn? Or, I don't know. Not only were the Portuguese pissed, but they were sending not one, but two Portuguese fleets after him. Oh, no. So he's being chased. So there's a ticking clock element here. I like that. He's being chased. How is this not a movie? Yeah. Maybe it is. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Cue cue Scooby-Doo music right now. And not only There's going to be all these hallways where the ships are going through, and then they're all in the <laughs> And the caravels, by the way, that they're on, uh, they're, they're not the big Spanish galleons that you think of. They're smaller. Like, like the biggest ones are, like, I think 120 tons. Really not big. Very cramped. Not big. Uh, not the big galleons that you think of. Yeah. These are... They're maneuverable for the time... But not by modern standards, maneuverable. They're rickety, rickety boats. But it wasn't only that, gentlemen. It wasn't just that the Portuguese were mad. It wasn't just that they were sending two fleets after him. It wasn't just that. He also sent something that said, Hey, your, um, your Spanish captains don't like you. They don't like you at all because you're Portuguese. And guess what they're going to do? They're going to mutiny the first chance they get. And I have insider knowledge on this. Because Cartagena did not like Magellan from the get-go. And every decision Magellan made, Cartagena thought he knew better. Right? And he goes, I'm telling you, they're going to mutiny. You better be ready for that. And that's where we're going to leave you for part two of the first circumnavigation of the globe. Yeah. Fucking (laughs) A. I mean, 
I, I feel like uh, he's uh, sailing into a sea of trouble. Uh, I guess we're just going to have to see what happens next ne- next time. You know? <laughs> yes, uh, indeed. I really lost his head back there. All right, everybody, thank you so much for listening to the History Boys. Yeah. I am Christopher Whedon, History Boy. Nice. And, and I gotta tell you guys, I'm, uh, you know, I, I've been having such a good time in this episode. Oh, by the way, uh, Tyler Armitrot, History Boy here. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, that being said, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I hope you're gonna look forward to, uh, the, the, the multiple parts that are, yeah, the yes. conclusion that's coming, uh, to this one, and, uh, and, you know, uh, thank you next. Thank, thank, thank th- you. Th- thank you. Next. <laughs> thank you. Next. next time, not this time. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> and thank you and I will talk to you next <laughs> this is all staying in I got this I got this this is all staying in Tyler uh, thank you so much until next time thank I you. am a, a, am Zach the prettiest and youngest history boy oh. Mech and, well, uh, these are true uh, yeah. the, the, these are true and I'm the ugliest and oldest <laughs> plus one and he wears it with pride it's great. And yeah, thank you so much, guys. And I'm Jerry Nash, your humble history boy. Thank you so much for listening. We love every single one of our listeners so much. I can't even put it into words. And you know what, gentlemen? Yeah? We have a shout out. <gasps> what? I think we got two. We have two shout outs. Uh, who's the first one, Zach? Uh, so. Just so you guys know, you can always throw us some fucking money and be part of the Patreon pals. And we got a new Patreon pal. Throw us some bones. Let's welcome Erica. 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 We love you. We love you. Thank you. I love Thank you. you so much, Erica. You're we'll amazing. We'll see you at Beers with the Boys. Well, welcome, welcome to History Boys. Or at the I love or, you. <laughs> or, or at the... Uh, the unofficial headquarters of the History Boys, the Rendezvous in Seattle. But definitely, which is sort of a his, sort of a beers of the boys. Anytime we're there, yes, well, fair <laughs> enough. Fine, uh, sure that. Sometimes I have, have beers with just myself. I'm a boy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we have another one. Uh, another one. We also now we hardly we hardly ever do this, but you know what? I think it's David. No, it's David. No, Are we talking about Dave from Alabama? D- Dave. Uh, Alabama Dave. Uh, what he know. did is he sent us... A... He, he he has shaken our, our faith in society and humanity as a whole. What he, what um, he did... What he did was send us a... A, a very, very I'm, well... He sent us an email that is... Can usually I... we don't do shout-outs unless... It, it, you know, we do the shout-outs with, with the Patreon pals, but this one is, like, literally... Like it is, it is the it is the shot that broke the condom. We and we gotta call you out anyway, Dave. You're fucking amazing. We yeah. love you. You rock. Thank you for 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 the kind words uh, you put in your email. Honestly, uh, it 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 helps us to keep going in that way as well. Like just just to know that that people are out listening to us and enjoying the show. It really means nope, the world I- to us. You know, you know, money is, is is fantastic, and and we love all of our Patreon subscribers. But keeps even, the lights on. Even just, oh yeah, it legitimately keeps the show moving. But but even to just hear that you're enjoying the show, it really makes our day. It really does. And to our other fans, you're never going to see the email that he left us, but it was uh, so above and beyond. We wouldn't be doing this unless it was. So you have to trust yes. us, and that's just yeah. the way it is. Yeah. If you would like to send us an email uh, regarding whatever, honestly, if you just want to say hello uh, or, or whatever you would like to, to, to talk to us about, our email is historyboyspodcast at gmail.com. Uh, go ahead and send us whatever you, know, whatever you want there. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter at historyboys. Uh, on on Instagram as well, uh, on Facebook, you can do all that. You're gonna get updates from us uh, when whenever new uh, episodes come out. We are bi-weekly every Saturday. If you don't know by now, every other Saturday I should say. If you don't know by now, 
and yeah, I, again, I just want to reiterate uh, just how much we love uh, each and every one of you that listens to our show. God damn, we love you guys so much. It's true. It's true. Thank you so much. Mr. Zach. Love you. Bye. Without a lot of fun We'll see you next time